All right, it is quarter past three, so I'm uh, going to start. Uh, welcome, my, uh, my name is Walter Heck, and I'm uh, here to uh, present today a, a session that was originally titled 600,000 queries per second on a MySQL Galera cluster. But as I was preparing the slides this week, I realized that we are past a million uh, queries per second, so I hacked my own uh, uh, presentation title. Um, so in the next hour, I'll, uh, I'll be telling you a bunch of uh, stuff about a, a case study, a client of ours that we've uh, built a, a Galera cluster for. Um, we'll, uh, we'll look into how all of that is, uh, is done. Um, first of all, uh, who am I? Uh, my name is uh, Walter Heck. I'm a, a software engineer. Originally, I was once a Delphi programmer. Um, uh, but obviously that uh, language died, so it was time to uh, move on to something else. And uh, my next uh, challenge was uh, MySQL. Um, and then system administration, and then I r started running all the data. So um, I'm doing less technical stuff now and uh, a little bit of uh, MySQL still. Um, so I'm the CTO and founder of, uh, of Olin Data. We are uh, uh, an open source training and consulting uh, company. We uh, uh, are Puppet Labs partner for uh, uh, all of Asia and uh, part of Europe. Uh, we do a bunch of other training, Node.js, uh, some OpenStack. Uh, we do some MySQL consulting. That's why I'm standing here. Um, and uh, uh, a whole bunch of other uh, stuff. Um, what we'll be talking about today, this is more or less the overview. Um, so the, the uh, MySQL cluster, uh, the Galera cluster is run, uh, uh, configured with, uh, with Puppet. So we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about what we do uh, with Puppet. It's not so much um, the, the, the topic of focus here. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll just take a quick look at it. Um, Galera cluster, for those of you who are not familiar with it, does anybody who here is running Galera cluster? That's getting more over the years, slowly. Um, some terminology. Uh, we'll look at uh, um, some uh, statistics of what, we, uh, what we're running and uh, uh, what kind of hardware we, uh, we have and all of that. Um, the HA proxy uh, setup that's uh, uh, sitting in front of uh, 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 Galera. Uh, we'll look at uh, stuff like monitoring, uh, uh, how do we do operations, uh, some backups. Um, and obviously, we'll end with uh, what the next challenges are, because any growing infrastructure n challenges never really stop. Um, so a million was fun, uh, but now it needs to scale to 10x that in the next couple of years. Um, so we have some more challenges coming our way. Um, so first off, uh, uh, a little bit about uh, uh, Puppet. Who here is familiar with Puppet? So Puppet is a, a configuration management software, open source uh, configuration management software. It's uh, actually commercially supported open source, so you can choose, just like with MySQL, you can choose uh, uh, the open source version or you can choose the uh, enterprise uh, uh, supported uh, version. Um, it's configuration management software, so what you do is, um, uh, let's say, I'll explain it to you as I explain it to my 73-year-old uh, uh, mother. Uh, that should get everybody uh, on the same uh, uh, line. In the old days, you would have 10 laptops. You would log into every laptop and install Microsoft Office on each one of them, and that would be horrible. Uh, with uh, uh, software like Puppet, there are many others like it, Salt, Chef, Ansible, um, you name it. Um, with that kind of software, you take one of those laptops and you say, hey, if one of the other nine laptops comes in and asks what it needs to be uh, uh, running, uh, tell it to go and install Microsoft Office. Now I only have to work on one laptop and all the other nine are uh, uh, managing themselves. Puppet, it's the same, uh, same story, only um, we're talking about servers and larger than uh, 10 nodes. Um, Puppet happens to scale quite nicely. Um, I've run it on two servers the very first time we were uh, using it just to, uh, to play with it. Um, but uh, uh, CERN uh, in, in Switzerland uh, are running it on somewhere between 200 and 400,000 nodes. So it, it scales quite well. Uh, obviously, 200,000 is not going to be out of the box. You'll need to pull some stunts to, to get that working. But um, uh, yeah, it's a 
infrastructures of 10, 15,000 are not really uh, uh, an exception for, uh, for Puppet infrastructures. Um, one of the nice things is that uh, Puppet is very uh, multi-platform. So uh, um, uh, I heard the founder of Puppet Labs once call it the Switzerland of IT. They want to try and not be specific to an operating system. So it runs on, on, on Windows, many Unix flavors, uh, uh, Mac OS, BSD, all of these things. Uh, um, some of the newer network devices also run Puppet agents, uh, which makes it nice and uh, very usable for infrastructures that are uh, running every operating system under the sun. Um, with Puppet, you write infrastructure as code. Um, so uh, you get all the benefits of having your whole infrastructure written down in code, um, which means that uh, you get a whole bunch of, uh, uh, of benefits. Um, I won't go too deep into that right now. This is a, a typical uh, Puppet architecture. Uh, you div you uh, assign one or more machines in your network to be a Puppet master. Um, that uh, is a, a machine that runs a, a daemon called the Puppet master. Um, there is a Git repository that uh, that run that has all your your Puppet code in it. Uh, it doesn't have to be Git, by the way. It doesn't even have to be in version control if you really uh, um, don't want to. I couldn't imagine why, but. Most people are running, in, uh, running with Git at the moment. Um, so you have a Git uh, repository that contains all your Puppet code that is checked out onto the Puppet Master. And then all the servers in your network. Can you guys see the red dot? Yeah, is that clear? Hmm. Um, so all the servers in your network, I just created three random ones. Uh, don't try to hack them. They don't actually exist, I think, I hope. Um, so the three random servers, three servers, or all the servers in your network are running a, a small little uh, uh, program called the Puppet Agent, which you can also run as a uh, uh, as a daemon, or uh, uh, many people run it as a cron job that wakes up every 30 minutes, and uh, the agent connects to uh, the Puppet Master and says to the Puppet Master, "Hey, I am web01.olandata.com. Tell me what I uh, what my configuration needs to look like." The Puppet Master looks into the uh, Puppet code to see, OK, uh, this is the configuration. It needs to be running MySQL. It needs to have this config file. And it needs to have these users and these directories created. Um, compiles all of that in a, a JSON file called the, uh, the manifest and sends that right back to the uh, Puppet agent that's still waiting here on, the, uh, on that machine. The Puppet agent receives that configuration and compares it to the, uh, uh, to the server itself. And any differences are uh, uh, changed, or at least attempted to be changed, so that the uh, server after the Puppet agent run looks exactly like the uh, uh, Puppet master told it to. Um, that's, in a nutshell, how, uh, how Puppet works. Um, Galera cluster. Um, so it's created by a company called uh, Codership that has renamed itself to Galera Cluster, if I'm not mistaken, um, because nobody knew Codership and everybody knew Galera Cluster, so then they decided to rename themselves, which I think is probably a good move. Um, Puppet Labs was also not called Puppet Labs before, but then everybody knew Puppet and nobody knew Reductive Labs, so they decided to change their name also. Um, so Galera Cluster uh, is uh, basically a library that is compiled on top of uh, uh, MySQL. It's also commercially supported open source. You can use the open source version, or you can pay them for uh, uh, some excellent support if you, uh, uh, if you want. Um, it's also multi-platform. Uh, distributions available. Uh, uh, so both uh, uh, Percona and MariahDB compile, uh, offer a, a, a version of their uh, uh, MySQL uh, um, a distribution that has uh, uh, Galera compiled into it, so you don't have to get into that yourself. Just uh, install it from uh, from their uh, package repositories, which makes life a lot easier. Um, it uh, provides uh, high availability in a way that is uh, uh, quite strange for uh, people who are used to traditional uh, uh, MySQL replication. Um, so. Traditional MySQL replication is asynchronous, uh, where uh, the, um, uh, you send a query to the, to the master. Um, 
and the master executes it, writes it to a log, the slave downloads it and executes it as well. Uh, whereas with uh, uh, Galera, uh, when, a, uh, um, when you send a query to, uh, to one of the nodes, it won't return until all of the nodes have at least committed that they can execute the query. They don't all actually execute, execute the query, but they at least uh, uh, say, hey, I can, I can do this. Uh, and if they all do that, then it comes back. Um, it means that your failover uh, uh, situation will be very different uh, with a traditional uh, uh, replication. If uh, a slave failed, okay, then not the end of the, uh, the world, but if your master failed, uh, you had to make another slave, the master, and then have all the other slaves uh, uh, connect to the, to the new master, figure out which uh, position to be at, was not really a uh, fun exercise, uh, to be honest. Um, with Galera, uh, in this case, we have uh, five nodes in a cluster, uh, six nodes actually at the moment, but it should be five. Um, and if one drops out, the um, the other four just keep working and no big problem, usually. I'll tell you some horror stories of things I've watched that were not really a lot of fun uh, over the time. Um, split brain is the uh, situation in which uh, um, there is a, a network split and um, the, uh, both sides cannot really figure out if they are the, uh, the biggest part of the cluster. So uh, Galera uses something called a quorum, uh, which means that uh, if a, uh, a uh, um, one or more nodes fall off of the cluster, if the, uh, the remaining nodes are in uh, a, a piece of the cluster that is more than half the cluster, they'll keep working and otherwise they'll shut themselves down because they might be Small, a smaller piece of the cluster. Um, so split brain happens when you have, for instance, four nodes in a cluster, and it gets split in the middle. Uh, then both of them have no idea if they are the majority. So uh, the recommendation is to always have uh, an uneven number of nodes in a cluster. Um, we are failing uh, to uh, um, commit to that uh, idea with our cluster. We have six nodes in the cluster, um, but realistically with six, uh, the chances that uh, uh, such a thing happens is so small that we haven't seen it uh, uh, so far. All the nodes are on the same physical network in the same data center, um, so uh, the, there is less of a chance than when there was uh, going to be a replication over, uh, over WAN. Um, IST, SST, um, so uh, the way Galera works is that if a new node joins the cluster, whether that node was previously down uh, or not, um, Galera says, hey, a new, uh, a new node, do you already have data? Yes. Um, what was the last uh, transaction that you uh, uh, committed into your uh, node? If that falls within a certain uh, cache, uh, then I can send you an incremental state transfer, only the differences that you missed out on. Great. In reality, it doesn't happen so much. Um, you can uh, increase that buffer uh, to a larger uh, amount, um, but it's not really, uh, um, in, in such a high performance uh, cluster, it, it, it rarely happens that an IST uh, happens, Incre incremental state transfer. Um, the other option is a SST, which is called a state snapshot transfer. Is that correct? Does anybody know? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Anyway, SST, uh, you will become very familiar with the word SST, and you'll probably start hating it after a while as well. An SST is um, a wipe all data from the server and copy it all from another node in the cluster, which means that that other node uh, so you ask the cluster, like, hey, I need a copy of the data, and the cluster says, okay, this node will be the donor. It sets that node to a state that is uh, the, the, the donor uh, state, and um, that node will start copying the data over, to, over the network to the other, uh, to the node that is receiving. Um, with a 300 gig database, that becomes annoying at best. Um, oh, sorry, that was my... Caffeine, one of the best tools on a Mac. 
do do do. Back down to proof. Um, so uh, um, yeah, that becomes annoying at best. In the very beginning, we were on 100 megabit network. That was really ridiculous. You would spend half a day waiting for a state transfer. Uh, then we were on gigabit network. And that makes it 40 minutes to an hour or something like that, depending a bit on the uh, day of the week. Um, now there's a new cluster and that will be on a 10 gigabit network and that should make it a lot nicer, except that then other hardware becomes the bottleneck. Uh, so we're still in the works of figuring that out. Yeah, uh, more often than you would like to. I would say a couple of times a month. It depends a bit. So sometimes it's, it's like any operation. Sometimes it's stable for forever. And then all of a sudden, uh, it starts happening all over the place. What happens generally is that when something happens to this cluster, it doesn't just happen to one node. It happens to one node, and then another falls over. With this kind of high performance uh, clusters, it's really difficult to have uh, proper uh, uh, failover. I don't think that the cluster has gone completely down more than a couple of times, uh, but, it, but it has happened uh, uh, indeed, simply because uh, uh, this uh, um, Galera is very uh, uh, trigger happy. I'll get to that in a, in a minute, but you'll see uh, some of the downsides of uh, uh, Yeah, so uh, the, the problem is, that, or one of the problems is that if you have, for instance, six nodes, and one node goes down, then another node has to come down to, to uh, donate to that uh, node that is uh, recovering, which means you have two nodes going down. If, you're, if that happens to happen in a high peak traffic uh, situation, all of a sudden you uh, only have 60% of your uh, uh, capacity left, and then it's very easy for more misery to happen. Um, Galera is a, 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 so I made a two, two categories. I made a category called features, and here I have a category called features. Uh, uh, so uh, the <laughs> on the plus side, we have the features. Um, the Galera is a, a, a true multi-master, so you can read and write to any node at any time. Um, in, a, in reality, um, it's not entirely true. Um, if you have hotspots in your data, uh, so certain uh, rows that get written to really, really frequently, uh, then writing to multiple nodes for those same, uh, same rows at the same time is not going to be uh, a pleasant experience because you'll get uh, conflicts and that uh, uh, is translated into a, a, a deadlock. Um, so to cover that, uh, uh, most people either write everything to a single node or uh, write uh, specific parts of the application to a single node. So you could write everything that has to do with users to one node and everything that has to do with logs to or whatever to another node and everything that has to do with messages to uh, yet another node. That kind of stuff uh, uh, makes that a little bit easier. Um, so synchronous replication, which means that there is no slave lag, uh, which for those of you who have run MySQL traditional replication, it's probably a, uh, a yay. Um, I don't miss that at all, actually. Uh, lost data when a node crashes also doesn't happen. With a traditional replication, we would have these uh, whole situations where uh, a slave went down or a master went down and then the application started writing to another master, but it didn't really figure it out that it was another master. So all kinds of mess uh, would happen regularly. That's all gone. Uh, all the nodes are always the same. Mostly, uh, <laughs> there are ways to you know, to mess that up as well, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, Multi-threaded slave. So uh, uh, Galera has this uh, uh, multi-threaded uh, uh, apply uh, uh, thing, uh, where you can have we have we run sixteen threads at the same time. We'll, I'll, I'll show you in a, in a bit. Um, so we, before this, we were running uh, uh, master slave uh, uh, with a, a MMM, uh, very old, not very old. I was here in 2009 preaching the MMM uh, story, so I'm curious to see what uh, I'll be preaching in five years from now. Um, but um, 
in MMM, you had this whole slave over, uh, massive slave failover, and you had a virtual IP that you were writing to, and that virtual IP should be moved to the new master, but it didn't always work that way. ARP caches that would get uh, stuck, all of these things, wasn't very pretty. Um, you can have uh, hot standbys because there is no real uh, downtime uh, during failover uh, because there isn't failover in the first place. Just a node stops working, period. Um, automatic node provisioning, this is something that I've also put on the features list um, because it's uh, also super annoying, but at the same time, um, with traditional replication of a slave really messed up, you had to copy the data from another slave and do the same thing manually that you should be able to do uh, automatically. Galera does this for you, so you don't have to worry about copying the data over from the slave. Uh, it supports InnoDB. I put that also on the features list because it only supports InnoDB. Um, there is some option to also sort of replicate MySum, but uh, there is no guarantees about any kind of uh, uh, um, stability or that kind of stuff, so just don't do that. Um, one of the, the fun things is that it's uh, transparent to applications, so before you had to figure out which node to read to and which node to write to, and that really is gone. You can write to any node. Uh, so no read and write splitting is technically needed. Um, we came from a situation where we had that because we were on this whole uh, master slave replication already, so then uh, we decided to sort of stick with that. Um, Galera features, it's uh, uh, sort of trigger happy. Um, we've had situations where uh, four nodes went down. Um, we had a situation, so originally the um, cluster was running, it's, it's been upgraded from all the way from MySQL, stock MySQL 5.0 to MariaDB 5.2 and 5.3 and 5.5 and then to uh, Percona server 5.6, I believe, and then to Galera. Turns out there is some bug with the storage of date times uh, that changed from 5.5 to 5.6 or something. Um, anyway, uh, we had two nodes that were never an old MySQL version. They were always, they, they just came into the cluster as uh, uh, PXC uh, 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 nodes. And the other four came from this old uh, uh, moved, moved, moved uh, data set. So they had actually this problem, which was an hidden, kind of a hidden uh, problem, until one day we hit a bug. All those four old nodes went down like nothing. Uh, and, the, and one of the uh, two that was left over um, did a, uh, went to donate to one of the other four. Um, and then that node went, or the other node went down because all of the traffic of the whole application was rammed onto a single server, which wasn't really uh, um, anything suitable. So five of the six nodes were vanished in like, uh, it was a bit more than a minute, but watching that happen is just like, but that one is also, and that one, uh, what, what? Not cool. So what Galera does is uh, uh, when a node comes back up, um, and decides it needs to do a full state transfer, or an, an SST, it will wipe everything from the data directory completely without asking you, hey, should I just wipe everything? Um, which is freaking scary. Um, I would like there to be an option that says, before you wipe all my data from the server, just, I don't know, stop and ask me, or just stop and let me set a specific flag that says, okay, it's cool that you wipe everything from this uh, server. Um, because it's scary. Uh, you lose all the data that's on there. It doesn't actually do an uh, uh, RM-RF, but it's essentially what it does. Um, Galera is pretty hard to set up. There are lots and lots of options, and they need to match exactly, and there are lots of moving parts. Uh, um, to do an SST, it uses the, uh, uh, there's many methods, but the most useful one uh, uh, in most cases is uh, extra backup, uh, which is a Percona uh, uh, backup tool that does some smart stuff. But in order to uh, have the state transfer happen correctly, you need to both have all the, um, the, the disk, uh, the directory permissions have to be exactly accurate, both on the donating node as well as on the uh, 
receiving node, uh, but you never know which node is going to be your donor because it can be any node in the cluster. That's up to the cluster to decide. Um, you have to have the permissions set correctly for uh, the uh, extra backup tool to run in the first place. All of this seems pretty trivial, but before you have the whole set of options uh, figured out nicely, it usually takes a while. Um, so we, uh, uh, we did this with, uh, with the Puppet module, um, which helped a lot. Uh, you can find it on, uh, on github.com slash uh, and There's a, uh, the Galera Puppet module is there. That's the one that we used. Um, some operations are not supported. I don't know them from the top of my head, and I neglected to look them up. Um, but there are a few things that you shouldn't do on a Galera cluster uh, that you can do somewhere else. Uh, and the last feature that I wrote down is InnoDB only. Um, technically, InnoDB is the only supported st uh, storage engine. Um, we had last week or the week before that uh, some developer create a table that was my ESAM. And um, it happened, he happened to create it on the, on one of the nodes that was also the only one uh, reading it back, but uh, if you do that and you don't have the MyISM support enabled, then um, it'll just create a MyISM table on that one server and not on any of the other servers, and it just sit there and nothing, nobody will notice and nothing will log or say, hey, by the way, you have a table that is nowhere else and now you have technically a inconsistent cluster. So after God knows how many days, uh, uh, one of our guys was uh, uh, comparing uh, just a routine check after uh, we had uh, some kind of in incident. And he's like, we have this one table that exists on only this node and not on any other node. And then it turned out to be a MyISM table. So be careful with that. Um, Right. Yeah, so uh, we just turned off the whole MyISM uh, support, and I don't think you should be using it, but unfortunately with, uh, uh, with MySQL, it's only uh, uh, in the create table. Uh, you can, anyone can set the, the storage engine, and it's not going to fail. It's just not going to replicate. So I would like that if somebody executed a statement that says create a table with the MyISM table engine, uh, uh, storage engine, fail, uh, tell me that it's not allowed because I don't have any support for that. That would be much nicer. Um, I think one of the things that I'm missing here um, is, uh, oh sorry, no, it's here, well, uh, uh, logs are super hard to read. The Galera logs a whole bunch of stuff that is all completely irrelevant to you, and when it does log errors or problems, it logs it in such a way that you have to be able to read Egyptian upside down and in order to be able to figure out what it does uh, or what it means. And especially when things go wrong with these uh, SSTs or the ISTs, um, it logs part of it on the one node uh, that is uh, donating and part of it on the node that is receiving the donation. Um, but then uh, if something goes wrong on the extra backup side, it's actually in the extra backup log file that is secretly hidden away in your data directory. So it's... Uh, a fun adventure to figure out what uh, uh, what gets logged where. So all of that was the introduction. <laughs> uh, let me see, how far are we? Ah, halfway through, that's perfect. Um, so now a little bit about this specific uh, case. We have a client that runs a, a holiday property booking application uh, where people who own a cottage can, uh, or multiple cottages can uh, manage the bookings that come in for those cottages. Uh, they have integrations with things like booking.com and a whole bunch of other uh, websites. So um, there is, uh, especially when uh, uh, booking.com uh, synchronization happens, the whole uh, availability of these cottages needs to be updated and calculated and sent to booking.com and they're pretty uh, trigger happy as well with their, uh, with their API, so that's pretty heavy. Um, Complicated queries with this, uh, uh, the checking the availability of a property. So somebody says, I want to rent this property from, I don't know, August 20th to 27th, and then you have to figure out if it's available and what the price is for that week and all that kind of stuff. So there's pretty uh, complicated uh, uh, queries there. Um, 
the, it's a single MySQL database. Actually, it's 300 gigs uh, by now, uh, 500 plus tables. I think it's 600 by now. It keeps growing. They uh, develop quite fast. Um, the app servers are not under our control, um, so the uh, client uh, develops the application themselves and they run ASP Classic, um, which is fun uh, because it doesn't support things like memcached, so they use the database for caching because that didn't exist back then. ASP Classic is still supported until 2023 or something like that, so we're ridiculous. Yeah, it's really... Uh... <laughs> I, I keep being surprised every time I look it up. Did I look, look that up correctly or did I just dream that it gets uh, supported that long? Oh no, they're really standing behind it. Um, as a special, they use a lot of uh, stored functions to calculate things on the database servers instead of on the web servers. Um, specifically those availability uh, queries, they uh, do some uh, nice tricks to uh, make that all work a bit faster. Um, what does it look like, the, the, the database side of the whole story? Um, it's fairly simple. We have a Galera node um, that uh, takes mostly writes and some reads, uh, and then the other five uh, Galera nodes. Uh, as I said before, you can write to any node with Galera, but what we uh, came from was this uh, uh, traditional uh, uh, MySQL replication setup where we already had a split between read and write traffic, and uh, it just turned out to be the easiest to keep it that way. Um, so what we did is we have an HA proxy uh, instance in front of uh, the Galera uh, uh, nodes. It happens to be running on the what we designated as the primary uh, writer, and that HA proxy listens on two different ports, and uh, the application sends all of its write traffic to uh, 13306 and all of its read traffic to 13307, and the uh, HA proxy instance pipes all of the traffic from uh, that comes in on this port straight to the primary writer unless that one is down and all of the read traffic goes straight to the other five nodes. Um, we have an, a passive HA proxy sitting here as well in case this one, in case this whole machine fails because these two things run on the same uh, physical machine. Uh, it's all physical machines by the way. And the reason they run on the same physical machine is to eliminate the network hop between the HA proxy and the primary writer. It just saves performance. Um, so there's a passive HA proxy. We have never needed it, but it's there in case this machine goes down for whatever reason. Um, we have had Galera go down, but we haven't had the machine go down. So um, HA proxy has also never gone down. It's super stable and it's really, uh, I'm really impressed by what it, uh, what it can do. Um, very high throughput, no problems, uh, really happy. Um, the whole thing is managed by a, uh, a open source Puppet Master 3.7.5 and RT, R10K, uh, which is a fun deployment tool for Puppet, uh, and MCO, M means M Collective, which is a orchestration tool that comes with Puppet. Uh, I'll keep those to the side, it's not really the uh, uh, focus for today. Um, so this is mostly the, uh, the, the simple uh, setup. Um, what do we have for uh, hardware? Uh, all six servers are exactly the same. Um, it runs Debian uh, uh, 7.8 at the moment. Uh, uh, we have a, um, uh, some fairly average uh, CPUs, nothing, uh, nothing too uh, uh, intense. 64 gigs of memory. Um, this was taken at a low uh, um, traffic time uh, somewhere last night, actually. Um, so uh, uh, the load is not too high and uh, it's running quite nicely. Um, the Galera related configuration, um, so when you uh, have a, uh, um, a Galera MySQL, uh, MySQL with Galera built in, you get a bunch of new uh, uh, system variables. So we have the SST method set to extra backup uh, v2, which is kind of the uh, most used uh, uh, SST method. Um, you can do things like rsync and MySQL dump as well, but the MySQL dump uh, style SST is blocking, so it means that your donor cannot do anything until it's done MySQL dumping, um, and then has to catch up. 
Uh, the slave threads, we have set it to 16. Uh, so there are 16 threads uh, applying uh, uh, queries from the other nodes uh, at all times. Uh, Gcache is the uh, Galera cache. I mentioned that if uh, a node comes back up uh, after it has been down, it will uh, uh, do an incremental state transfer if the uh, amount of writes that it's had, uh, sorry, if the amount of writes that the rest of the cluster has had is less than uh, its cache. We've set that cache to one gig at the moment. Um, then a bunch of the uh, MySQL uh, options that we've said, set. Um, uh, bin log format uh, is, uh, has to be role for uh, Galera. Query cache is not supported, so that is uh, turned off as well. Uh, the provider options, this is where you set that, uh, that G cache. So we set that to uh, one gig. We have uh, the slave threads uh, uh, set to 16. I've already mentioned that. Auto increment control. So uh, if you set this to one, then um, uh, the uh, auto increment increment and the auto increment offset uh, um, uh, settings will be managed by Galera itself. So you don't have to worry about it. This is uh, this has to do with uh, making sure that primary keys are uh, um, uh, far enough apart, so you don't have have to worry about. Uh, um, uh, collisions in, uh, in primary key assignments if you have a, a auto primary keys uh, um, uh, set up. Um, we have a Galera notify script. Not super happy about this, so uh, Galera can, whenever something happens to the cluster, uh, a change happens to the cluster, it can uh, uh, run this uh, script um, and automatically you can notify whatever you want to notify. Um, but there is about six or seven potential options that it can pass, and in most of the cases it uh, passes only one of those options, so you don't really have much information. Um, so it's mildly useful. I'll show you in a minute what we're, what we're using it for. Um, the SST method is set to extra backup v2, I already mentioned that. Um, the uh, uh, SSD authentication, uh, so depending on what SSD method you are using, this requires some other values. Um, but yeah, this is not our actual password, uh, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> um, but anyway, that, that's how you mention the user and then the password uh, uh, of that user. And this is the user and name and password that are used by the SSD uh, when uh, extra backup needs to make its backup of the uh, uh, donating node so that it can send that off to the, uh, to the receiving node. Uh, then some SSD specific uh, uh, options. Uh, we set the stream format to XB stream. You can read uh, over here why you should use that one and not the other ones. Um, and then some fun ones. We set progress to one, especially with a large uh, database. It's good to be able to see how long, how far along you are in your SSD. It logs a bit weirdly. Um, so we set it just to one. So it, it writes to the MySQL standard error. So you have to be tailing the MySQL error log, the tail F, uh, the, the MySQL error log, because otherwise it logs in a very strange way. Um, but if you tail dash F it, you can nicely see the SSD coming along. Um, so that's quite useful. Um, and time equals one. I don't know what it does if you don't have time equals one uh, set. Uh, but anyway, we have it. I know, that sounds like I should probably look up what it does exactly, but I managed to not do that. I finished my slides 10 minutes before the uh, presentation, so uh, bear with me. I broke my I broke my finger uh, last week, so that kind of uh, destroyed a whole bunch of uh, plans that I had. Um, a simple uh, 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 backslash s from the uh, from one of the nodes. Uh, so as you can see, I had to figure out, but this says two trillion, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but this, I think this says two trillion. So on two trillion queries, uh, eighty thousand of them were slow, which normally eighty thousand is a a reasonably high number, but on two trillion, I'm 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 prepared to let that slide. Um, and queries per second, uh, on average, uh, so that this is not the uh, the uh, the throughput at this moment. This is uh, this number divided by 140 days, 19 hours, 30 minutes, and 22 seconds. So this is more like sustained uh, throughput or the average throughput. 
185,000. So if you multiply that by six, you get to over a million. Uh, I noticed that yesterday when I was making these, uh, uh, these specific slides. Um, actually quite happy that we made it through a million because I was wondering when that would happen. Um, but um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what we have uh, there. We're using the uh, Percona XRDB cluster. We were using MariaDB in the beginning. And then uh, there was at some point a bug that was not solved in MariaDB and it was solved in Percona uh, cluster. Um, it had to do with the sword functions that they're using. So we had to switch to uh, Percona. And really, we haven't really noticed much difference, uh, to be honest. Um, the size of the data, it's uh, 240,000 megabytes. Um, on disk, we uh, still have some uh, uh, some InnoDB uh, uh, stuff there. So on disk, the whole data directory is about 300 gigs uh, in total. But the data, uh, the database is uh, 240,000. I changed the name of the database here, so also that is not the real name. Um, then so much for the uh, hardware and uh, MySQL. Uh, on the HA proxy side. I'm really impressed by uh, stability and throughput. It, 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 it pushes about 10 terabytes of MySQL traffic through uh, uh, its interfaces uh, every month. Um, I'll show you in a minute. We have uh, one writer front end and one reader front end. Um, the writer uh, uh, sends all of its node to the, sing to the same back end with the other uh, five nodes as the backups. So if the primary goes down, it sends it to the next one, and then to the next one, the next one, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And the reader front end just round robins through all machines uh, and doesn't really care. Um, Are these issues from the No, no, just a simple uh, uh, apt get install AJ proxy. Uh, it's fairly uh, uh, straightforward. Um, then we run HA proxy. Uh, so in order to run, uh, so HA proxy has two modes, TCP IP mode and HTTP mode. Uh, in order to uh, run this easily, um, we run it in HTTP mode, which sounds a bit strange considering we're talking about MySQL traffic. Um, but what we're doing is that uh, um, the health of each node is checked by a simple XENAD uh, script that um, just uh, calculate or uh, uh, checks a bunch of different conditions, and if they are all good, then it reports a, uh, uh, a fake HTTP status code, and if it's not okay, then it reports a 500 or something like that, or 5 with 3, and then um, uh, HTTP proxy takes that node out of the uh, replication. Uh, it's a bit hacky. Uh, you don't really have much control over status reporting inside the HTTP proxy uh, uh, front end. Um, but it works, uh, and it works really, really well. Um, so uh, we'll talk about backups later as well, but one of the nodes backups every four hours, uh, backs up every four hours. So every time it does that, it reports unhealthy to the, uh, uh, to the HA proxy instance, and it just gets taken out of the load balancing uh, easily. Uh, we don't have to worry about it. We have a failover standby uh, HA proxy instance on one of the other machines so that if one goes down, the other one will take over. As I said, we've never needed it. Hey, that's strange. Why does this slide say Corona Live London? I copied it from another presentation. I'm guilty. Um, so this is the uh, a screenshot of the HA proxy uh, uh, um, uh, status uh, interface. Um, you can see here that they have, they all have the uh, uh, status code 200. Uh, you can see that the, the one that is, so the whole thing has been up for 141 days. Uh, you can see here that this one has been up for 133 days. All the other ones have been down at some point uh, uh, or the other, um, but that hasn't affected the uh, uh, uptime of the cluster as a whole. Hey, go away. Um, you can see furthermore that we have here about 32 terabytes outgoing and eight incoming. So that's about 40 terabytes uh, uh, outgoing and incoming. Outgoing and incoming. 
uh, on the reader front end, and this is the writer front end. So you can see here that it only sends the traffic to the uh, uh, to the green uh, node, and the other five are blue, and blue is the color for backup. Um, so uh, these are actually the same six nodes, uh, and the the uh, the writer is the backup in the reader interface, so it doesn't really send traffic there unless it really, really, really has to, uh, because the, um, that single node cannot really deal with reader traffic and writer uh, traffic at the same time, strangely enough. Um, I think those are the most interesting parts about the, uh, the front end here. Um, the health check, uh, the, 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 the the Galera health uh, check um, comes from the uh, Puppet module. I put the URL here at the top so you can go and check it out. Um, so we check a number of things. Uh, if the state, uh, the, the local state, not is not two or four, and I believe that two or four is uh, um, online or donor. Uh, so uh, when, it, when it's a donor, it's still uh, in the cluster. Um, then it returns an error, and whenever we say return fail, that just returns an HTTP code of 503, I believe it's, or 504, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, WS rep connected, uh, so is it connected to the uh, rest of the cluster? Um, the cluster status, this says primary, uh, uh, if it's healthy, and donor, or donating, or desynced, if it's uh, not healthy, so only if it's primary. Uh, uh, or actually, if it's not primary, then we return a, a failure. Uh, WS rep ready uh, must be uh, uh, displaying on. And we check, lastly, if the uh, cluster state UID, uh, UUID is equal to the local state UUID. Um, this has to do with the um, uh, configuration, if I'm not mistaken. Not actually 100% sure. Um, so we check a bunch of things. It's uh, kind of redundant, uh, but we uh, decided to check more than what was needed uh, because it's relatively fast anyway. Uh, so uh, uh, better safe than sorry in this case. We also tracked uh, the disk space, by the way. We found that that wasn't a, we had that happen once, that a disk ran full and it didn't uh, check anything. MySQL just went down, uh, created all kinds of chaos. So that wasn't pretty. Um, but that's not in this uh, in this slide. Monitoring, we use a self-hosted version of PRTG. Not necessarily my favorite tool, but that's what the client uses also. It supports Windows and supports all kinds of other stuff, so it works. And uh, um, here you can see that everything's healthy, uh, just two servers are running a little bit low on disk. Um, what we do with the uh, Galera Notify uh, script is that uh, um, we send messages to our HipChat room. So uh, uh, within Olin Data, we have uh, uh, rooms for each client, and uh, the, um, the Galera Notify script sends automatically a, a message to the uh, HipChat room if something is wrong with the cluster, or if a change happens in the cluster. It doesn't necessarily mean that something is wrong. Um, so we send a message to the to the hip chat room. We do the same thing for backups, just to make sure that there is a message that says, "Hey, the, the backup is completed." Um, hip chat is uh, quite uh, convenient. It's basically uh, uh, an, uh, a fancy version of IRC with um, uh, how to say that. Um, when you log into HipChat, you can see what happened before you were there instead of not being able to see that as it is in IRC. So that makes it very useful for uh, this kind of uh, uh, things. You can see here that a node went down and then we fixed it. You can see that the, the uh, SSD was initiated here at 6.15 and then it takes about an hour for the SSD to, uh, uh, to complete. For backups, we used to have, so with uh, a Galera cluster, it's quite nice because it works on a completely different, uh, um, uh, how to say that, part than the uh, traditional replication. So you can set a whole Galera cluster as a slave of a uh, of another my, uh, single um, MySQL server, or you can set a, my, a single MySQL server as a slave of a Galera cluster. Uh, all of that is possible. We used to have that for backups. Um, but it didn't really work 
uh, very nicely. It was an offside slave. Either something went wrong with the um, the traffic between the slave and the um, um, and the Galera cluster, or the Galera cluster was executing some query that the slave couldn't handle. It was just it wasn't pretty, and then it broke, and then it had to be fixed. And it's not something you want to be uh, worried about. So what we do now is we uh, um, uh, make backups on one of the Galera nodes. Um, we uh, do a full inno backup x daily, and then five incremental uh, backups. Um, we do a, a daily MySQL dump, uh, and they just uh, get synced uh, off site to the uh, backup server uh, with the added advantage that we leave the last uh, uh, backup on the node that is uh, uh, making the backups so that when something really goes wrong, we already have a local uh, backup. Most of the time, I must say that when backups are needed, it is some developer that accidentally did something that he shouldn't have done to the production database, and it's just a, hey, can you get me a backup of table X, Y, Z, uh, which is why we make the MySQL dumps. Uh, so we make MySQL dumps of every table individually, because restoring a 300 gigabyte da data by database to retrieve 10 rows from a table that has 20 rows is really quite annoying. Uh, sometime this week, somebody accidentally uh, uh, over did a, uh, an update without a where clause. So we had all the records in the table overwritten with the same value. Not pretty. But at those moments, you're very happy that you have made backups per table, and you don't have to go and sit there and wait until 300 gigabytes of data is restored to then see if that backup even has the actual data that you're looking for or that you need to go back in time. Not pretty. So. MySQL dumps. Um, yeah, so to make a backup, you said uh, uh, desync uh, to on, which kind of uh, it takes the it makes the node unhealthy in our uh, um, uh, HA proxy uh, instance, so it doesn't receive any uh, direct traffic anymore. It does receive the traffic from the um, from the rest of the cluster, but at least it it, it quiets it down uh, enough for that uh, node to make a backup. So. It, it makes the backup, and then the script sets desync to off. Um, so that works quite well, actually. Uh, much nicer than this uh, old situation. Eight minutes. That's perfect, because this is my last slide. Uh, the current issues and what's next. Um, so uh, because the application keeps growing, more users keep signing up, which is all great, but it means more headache for us. Um, we have known for quite a while that this database needs to be split, but it happens to have built as a monolithic application that isn't so easy to split. So uh, that has been postponed and postponed and postponed a little bit more until now we are actually... Sorry? Until 2023? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> So now we are reaching the max capacity of a six node Galera cluster and the data is getting quite big and there is a bunch of reasons, so many reasons to make an actual effort to split off and to shard uh, the data that uh, we're actually uh, in the process of doing that or actually they are in the process of doing that for the operations side of database, uh, uh, of the MySQL database, it's not really that much. We just need to set up a second Galera cluster. Um, and then a third and a fourth and whatever. Um, so we have decided to uh, uh, um, do that on uh, on a 10 gig network, but new issues. It's that's really a uh, this week kind of thing. So we're kind of figuring out what the problem is exactly. Um, and one of the big uh, problems is backups take lots of space. Even if you take a uh, a backup a day, you want to keep the last seven days of backups. Uh, you take the incremental backups, you have the MySQL dumps. You want to keep the, uh, the backups from the, the last seven days, from two weeks ago, from a month ago, from two months ago, and from three months ago. You end up with a ton of needed space. Um, so for now, it still all fits. It, uh, it's a giant storage uh, server, but it's not as exactly fun. Uh, because also, uh, when the one node uh, that sits in the, in the cluster that's making the, the, the backups, it has to back up the whole uh, uh, thing, um, both in uh, uh, Inu backup and uh, uh, in uh, MySQL dump. So that takes a bunch of uh, a bunch of space. 
for now, I think we are okay. But if that keeps growing, then we uh, will have some new challenges on our on our hands. I think that was most of what I wanted to talk about. And considering I have five minutes left, that's perfect. Uh, obviously, I uh, wouldn't be cool if I didn't have a sign that says we're hiring. So we're hiring. Uh, if you like open source uh, software and you love traveling uh, and uh, a small team of skilled people, at least I think they're skilled, uh, then uh, send an email to jobs at oldendata.com or to myself. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Walter Heck. Uh, yeah, find us. Um, that's all. Uh, we are ready for questions. I have here a fancy uh, question mic. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Yes, I saw you've set WSREP slave threats to 16. Yes. Why so? Um, it, se it seems high to me. Well, we had it set to lower, and uh, this provided better, uh, better throughput, so uh, that's what we did. Uh, yeah, we played around with it in the very beginning and then never touched it again, so I must honestly say that it's been there for quite a while. Um, Back then, this uh, provided the best performance, so that's why it's set that way. Can you pass that on? Thank you. My name is Edwin. Hello. I would like to uh, ask you whether you uh, your customer requires multi data center set up in the future. Uh, in the future, yes, but uh, in the current. Uh, uh, um, Time space continuum, we have managed to convince them that multi data center failover is more pain than it's worth. Okay, uh, thank I, you. I, at least it's my belief. It, there is the chance, the off chance that the whole data center goes down. It has happened once or twice. It's a holiday cottage booking application. Uh, of course. They have received actual death threats during downtime. Uh, yes. <laughs> There are only five it wasn't big, me. <laughs> okay, there are only five big players in the scene, so they well, all get this, those threats. You know, it's a, a, um, a yes. Downtime is a big problem, and yes, it should not happen. But the amount of problems we've had from data center downtime is so limited that it's simply uh, currently not worth uh, going through the trouble of uh, uh, um, adding the complexity of uh, multi-data center failover. Thank you. Any, anyone else? I saw a hand up there somewhere. Or was that just me dreaming? No? All right. Then uh, if nobody has uh, any questions, uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions uh, later on, uh, come and find me here or um, uh, online. Thank you very much. <laughs>